Now, joining us from Virginia is Adam Kokesh. He is a American activist and talk radio host. Adam versus the man.com is his news website. And uh, I saw up on drudgereport.com about an hour ago, and we'll punch that up on screen, uh, the headline, radio host who lead an armed march on D.C. July 4th to put government on notice that we won't be intimidated, and that is CNS News. Now, they plan to march from Virginia to the bridge, and here to give us specific details first – uh, here on the Alex Jones Show uh, is Adam Kokesh. He is a Marine Corps veteran of Iraq and Fallujah, and he has a lot of courage. I have never done this. People have asked me to do this many times. I've never done it because I'm concerned they'll send in provocateurs and stage something to demonize gun owners. I believe in open carry. I believe we have the right to do it. Doing it around the nation has really shown that there is a right to keep and bear arms. Adam Kakesh, tell us, tell us what's happening and tell us what you're planning. Alex, this is an armed revolt against the American government. Make no mistake about it. That does not change the nature of the event, and that does not change the fact that every criticism leveled against what we are planning to do would be true of any act of resistance, of any open protest, of any act of rebellion. And to say, well, there are potential negative consequences as an excuse to cower before government does not strike me as something that would be said by someone who cares about risking what they hold dear to, to, to achieve what we hold most dear, and that is the liberty that is supposed to be a core value of this nation. And it's, it's really disgusting to see that there are those who would use the exact same tactics that they are saying are potentials in order to, uh, to, to derail this effort that, oh, somebody might say something bad about this, so we're going to say something bad about it now. And I, I heard the criticism from uh, the, the esteemed Mr. Rockwell suggesting that we have a peaceful event. We are having a peaceful event. And what we're going to be doing is gathering at the National Cemetery on Independence Day in the morning and mustering into a formation. We hope to make sure that this is done in the safest and most visible and obvious way possible. And if I have to personally inspect every single individual carrying in that formation to ensure that that's what it is, that's what's going to happen. We will only invite individuals, at least who are not law enforcement officers, to be there with only a rifle or a shotgun slung across their back where their hands are not anywhere near it. And it can be made completely clear that they are coming in peace while asserting their right to be armed. We are going to march across the bridge, the Memorial Bridge, into the District of Columbia, where open carry is not permitted, march down Independence Avenue around the Capitol, around the Supreme Court, and then up Pennsylvania Avenue, around the White House, back down to Constitution Avenue, and back peacefully to Virginia. What I'm going to be doing is co coordinating with law enforcement. My recommendation to them is they give us a, an escort, and they allow us to conduct our march peacefully in in an orderly manner and make it clear why we are there. However, should they decide to say that we will not be welcome in the District of Criminals, Mortar on the Potomac, we will make it clear to the country and to the world that free people are not welcome in the, in the, in the, in the capital of what is supposed to be the freest nation on earth, which we know to not be true now for many, many years, and yet so many Americans seem to labor under this illusion. And just recently, Speaking in Mexico, incidentally, President Obama said, I think many of you know that in America, our Constitution guarantees our individual right to bear arms. And as president, I swore an oath to uphold that right, and I always will. What well, we're going to find out on Independence Day 2013, whether President Obama and the law enforcement officers that enforce his will in the District of Columbia are oath keepers or oath breakers, and whether they're actually going to stand up for the Constitution and the Second Amendment to which they swore an oath. Should there be any meeting of physical resistance, I have declared that at least for myself, and I will ask everybody who is attending as a free individual to follow the same principles, that if we are going to be confronted physically, we are not going to physically challenge anyone. We are not going to cause any harm. We are going to conduct a peaceful event. And should we be confronted by law enforcement, even to the point of meeting physical resistance, if they do not create an immediate threat to life and limb, we will submit to the uh, physical will 
of the government as it represents what it does today and hope that we can reach out to those behind it. We can reach out to those who think that they should be able to affect the actions of others through the coercion of government rather than the persuasion that we as libertarians hold superior. And we are going to find out where this country stands come this Independence Day. Now, Adam, what about the concern that I raised that the media is going to try to spin this, that it's an armed revolt against uh, Mordor on the Potomac uh, or you know, kind of like the North Korean capital where only the government can be armed? Uh, I understand you know, you're doing this to exercise the fact that we do have a Second Amendment and that the Supreme Court's even ruled that they can't keep people from owning guns in D.C., but still... Uh, the district has not complied with the Supreme Court. So I understand historically you're in the right, but what about Lou Rockwell, the Von Mies Institute, libertarian icon, we all know him well, who was on earlier. He thinks this is a very bad idea. I get why you're doing it. I know you're a good guy. I support you yourself. I just know that this is like a present to a lot of provocateurs. How do you stop them from sending in a mentally ill person or somebody they've set up uh, to try to demonize the entire uh, Second Amendment movement. I mean, obviously, justice be done, may the heavens fall, but, uh, you know, that's not your problem, that's not my problem, but you've obviously thought that through. Well, I want to make it clear that we are doing everything possible to ensure that this event stays nonviolent. We are going to be coordinating with law enforcement, and should they not give us a concrete answer as to what their actions are going to be, and I have to be the first one to cross that bridge by myself, then that's what I'm going to do. And I think enough people know from my past that I have the credibility to do what I'm going to say, as, as you attest, and I'm greatly uh, appreciative of, of your endorsement in that, Mr. Jones. And, and I w I'm very much looking forward to seeing you there on Independence Day, not just as a reporter, but as a participant as I know you will be in one form or another. And also, I'd like people to know that we are inviting everyone who would like to come, who would not like to risk arrest, who would not like to be armed, to join us as well. If there are any supporters who would like to come unarmed, you'll be welcome to fall in at the back of the formation, should you choose. Although we might, it seems now, have far too many who are actually caring and, and restrict the formation just to that. But this is going to be an historic event. This is the showdown of 2013. We are going to put it on the line, and we're going to see if Obama is going to live up up to his words or not. I can think of no better way than, than, than doing this. And it's, it's just, there, there are those who are willing to cower, who will say that there's no time for confrontation. And there are those of us who will say, no, I am going to stand up. I am going to assert my rights. I'm going to make it absolutely clear what I'm doing, but I will not cower in the darkness. I will not let government tell me what to do. And yes, we are going with the aim of overthrowing the government. It has become obsolete. It is an anachronism in, in 2013 that we still believe as human beings that we should be organizing society by coercion and violence and force of a central authority rather than as free, beautiful, independent human beings who are capable of getting along by persuasion rather than coercion. And what we are doing is marking the high watermark of government on Independence Day 2013. And this is it. This is the beginning of the end for government, for this idea that this is how society should be organized, that, that this monopoly on violence, that this, this destructive Leviathan has any right to exist among free, enlightened people. And in this day and age, when we have the tools, we have the information, we are able to see past the propaganda, to sit back and endorse this system, to cower, to, to say that the status quo is somehow acceptable, seems antithetical to every principle of liberty that I have ever stood for. Well, Adam, I've never seen you this focused or on fire. You definitely know you've crossed the Rubicon now, historically. Uh, looking at this, this is the stuff that history is made of, what you're doing right now. For me to get up here on air and declare that a second American revolution was needed last year, a uh, intellectual revolution at the state level, but if the feds try to block it, then we have a right to uh, defend ourselves. This is the stuff of Lexington and Concord. I want you to quantify for everyone out there what you mean by this is an armed revolt and we mean to overthrow the government. Let me stop you. Do you mean overthrow the idea with civil disobedience and break the will uh, of the corrupt establishment that they have a monopoly of force peacefully? Because when you use the terms armed revolt, when you use the terms overthrow the government, I would say checkmate the illegitimate occupiers that outside of law are saying we don't have a Second Amendment when the Supreme Court's already ruled D.C. is in violation and people have a right to carry guns there. Is that what yes. you're saying? 
Alex, already it is checkmate for government. It is game over. We have put them in a lose-lose situation. And there's nothing they can do to rescue themselves from the situation when enough of their victims have realized that government is a racket. What I am suggesting the revolution really consists of is the withdrawing of our material support for government. That is a tax revolt. That is open resistance and rebellion when the government tries to force its will upon you. That means that we stand up to unjust authority in whatever way that we see fit. When it comes to violence, it is always an inferior inferior solution to peaceful means of resisting. And we hope that we can accomplish this entire revolution peacefully, that we can evolve past this phase of human society where we thought that government was necessary. But should it be necessary, we have to make it clear and put government on notice that we will use physical force when necessary and when appropriate to defend ourselves. I'm very glad that we haven't come quite to that situation yet, but the government's reaction to what we do on Independence Day may yet prove that to be necessary. I hope they are not going to put us in that kind of situation where violent resistance is appropriate. I would rather have the officers that we will be facing decide that they are gonna honor their oaths, that they are going to stand down, that they would rather be with the people than with the government. And as you said, it's already illegitimate. All we're doing is proving that and demonstrating that. And when we are able to march through that city armed, we will show that the government fears the people, not the other way around, and liberty will be restored. But when we're starting to get such big inroads in the info war, uh, I always say to people that want to get an armed war going that I don't see that going well uh, in the midterm or the short term, and I would like to try to have a velvet revolution, as I think you would like. Uh, so, so, so what do you say on that front? Power seeds nothing without demand, and as Thomas Sowell said, it's amazing how much panic one honest man can spread among a multitude of hypocrites. I think that's what this is exposing. I think simply changing the conversation here, putting the government in a lose-lose situation, is a huge victory for liberty. And we are going to do whatever it takes to ensure that this event is safe and peaceful, unless the government decides that it's not going to be. And if it turns out that all we end up with is a rally on the Virginia side of the river, we will have at least shown that free people are not welcome in the nation capital and hopefully put the government on notice that there are increasing numbers of people who are realizing this, who are waking up, who are tuning into alternative media like yourself, like Adam versus the man, who are realizing that the government doesn't have their best interests at heart. And that alone is a huge victory. So I think anything that we can do in this in this fight, anything that we can do to move humanity forward, to, to get the ball rolling, I think we are coming to an important turning point historically as, as you you know compared what we are seeing here with this event to the events of the American Revolution. I'm, I'm, I'm quite flattered to hope that uh, th th to think that there are people who are recognizing the significance of what we're doing. But even beyond the destiny of the United States of America, we are talking about our destiny as a species. And I can't imagine sure. that we are going to evolve to this point and then see that we are going to keep this government thing going and we are not going to get past this. So I, I, as part of that process, uh, I'm just honored to be in a position where I get to do something about it. I'm really honored to have your support in this. And it is incredible to see the outpouring of support that we've had online for this. And it looks like we are going to have more than enough of the, the numbers that we want to have a critical mass to make this a success. Now, Adam, uh, expanding on that, I get historically you have the right to do this. And I want to punch you up the Declaration of Independence for TV viewers that it's our right, it's our duty. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object invents a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, we're under a design of despotism. It is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which uh, constrains them uh, to alter their forms and their former systems of government. And it just goes into the tyranny uh, of the uh, King of England. And we now are under banker rule, where $85 billion a month is given to foreign banks and Warren Buffett, uh, we are now under a kleptocracy of lawlessness. Uh, my only issue is that I think when I first heard about this about 45 minutes ago on air, I was like, I, Adam's a good guy, but I have a bad feeling. But I think it's the same bad feeling of the big bullies waiting for you at the end of school. But, yeah. once, but, but, but once the fight starts, you feel good going home that you stood up to him. Even if you got your nose bloodied, you know, he got the same thing. I just don't want a physical war to start because I see us incrementally starting to win the hearts and minds. 
So I hope that this doesn't go bad or something, you know, doesn't happen. But, you know, that's the way it is. We need to trust in God, trust in, trust in providence, trust in the universe, uh, you know, bending towards justice. What will you say to those that will say Adam is a provocateur, Adam is a fed, a uh, Adam, uh, you know, is only doing this for publicity like a mercenary? B because obviously that's already being said. What do you say to those people? I'm a provocateur for liberty.